So, how to beat every top meta deck in Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel is the most asked question that I get on my channel. Today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about the craziest deck in Master Duel and how to beat them, but I'm not going to do it alone. Today, I got my boy, MST. Yo, Tom! Hey, guys. Tom, you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. Happy Saturday, Tom! Ah! You can't guys. say that. It blows up on the channel. Okay, so what's guys. up, everybody? This is Tom Box. And Tom. yes, we're gonna bring the takedown of the top 10 decks in Master Duel. And if you guys like seeing videos like this one, don't forget to kindly head over to MST TV and uh, hit that subscribe button for me. Appreciate you, love you, long time. And a recent study shows that you win more games if you hit that subscribe button to Sam's channel as well. So make sure you yeah! both. Guys, listen, Tom is the best guy when it comes to meta analysis and beating every single deck. And we're gonna do a breakdown on how to beat every single top deck in Yu Gi Oh! Master Duel. Tom, you ready? Oh, yeah, let's go. Let's, let's go! go! Yeah! Deck number one, we got Prank Kids. And you guys are probably wondering, Sam, Tom, how do you beat Prank Kids? Well, let me tell you. The biggest problem to face against Prank Kids is Butler. And every monster floats into the next monster for fast OTKs. How to prevent them from setting up their boards? Number one, Ash Blossom enjoys Spring on their first Meow Meow Moo. So they go summon Prank Kid, send the Prank Kid to the graveyard to link summons on Meow Meow Moo. Ash that. Ash that now. Or just maxi them on normal summon. Those are two really strong hand traps against prank kids. But how do we actually break their boards if their boards already established? Well, I got you. Guys, when you're on Master Duel, make sure you guys have the toggle switch on. Cards like Cosmic Cyclone and Twin Twister on their spawn trap cards are very important to stop them from their fusion plays. Or use Kaiju's or Droplet to stop that butler from activating. Once you do that, the turn should be free for the taking. That's how you sweep prank kids. Tom, you're next. Deck number two, True Draco. True Draco's strongest asset has to be their floodgates from the Kaiser Coliseum, stopping you from putting monsters on the field. And the second thing is the Monarchs Erupt, turning off all of your monster effects. If you're not tribute summoning, you don't get to play with effects. From there, they're gonna pick apart the field that you struggle to put together using the spells and traps, and then chip away at your life points while keeping you completely suppressed. So how do you beat you, Draco? Since most of their disruption comes in the form of spells and traps preventing monster stuff from going through, easy hard counters include mass board wipes like Lightning Storm, Harpy's Feather Duster, and Evenly Match. Just clear off everything and prevent them from gaining any more card advantage. You can even use Red Reboot to help you gain a little bit of a foothold for the entire turn if they activate their first Floodgate. Stop that and use this opportunity to one turn kill your opponent. Against Monarch Erupt, it works like Skill Drain, so it only negates the card if it's face up on the field. So if you have cards like Forbidden Droplet, for instance, you activate your monster effect to do whatever that you need to do, and then chain Droplet, removing your monster, and your effect will successfully go through. And if you need to interact with your opponent, if you have hand traps like Ash Blossom, Ash Blossom, you can stop them from gaining card advantage from their Card of Demise, Pot of Duality, and maybe if they play Pot of Desires. But these are the best angles for you to tackle this deck. Deck number three. Ooh, guys, I have a love hate relationship between this deck right here. This deck and I, we get along when I play the deck. But when I play against it, we don't really get along. Animancipator. One of the most problematic things about Animancipator is one, Block Dragon. That card is at three. Very problematic card. And two, Guardian stops you from using hand traps. So that can be a little bit tricky to play around, but you can still break and prevent their board. Cards that stop Guardian and Hockey Fibrax are impermanence. Impermanencing the Hockey Fibrax is very, very strong. Once they go for their Hawk play, don't use Ash, don't use anything else because Guardian will negate it. That's why it's really important to main deck Infinite Impermanence. And before that Guardian comes out, you just gotta use Max C. Max C will prevent them from special summoning a ton of monster. If they're going off and special summoning a bunch of monsters in the field while they're under Max C, you're just gonna be basically drawing to your outs. Cards like the Biru, cards like Droplet, cards like Storm, cards like Dark Rule No More are very great cards to draw against this deck. And guys, if they already set up the board, really good cards to main deck is Droplet or also Dark Rule No More to actually help break those boards so you can actually play. So yeah, guys, those are some quick tips on how to beat an Emancipator. Deck number four, Grenmanju OTK. This deck is super annoying, especially when you're caught off guard, mainly because the format is in a best of one, and this deck preys on people that chooses to go first. They interact with you by using cards that you cannot interact with, such as Kaiju. They're going to remove stuff off of your board and punch you for 8,000 damage, either through Grenmanju itself, or they're going to punch you with Numeron Dragon. So how do you beat Grenmanju? It's quite simple. You just need to know how to push and how to defend. For the push, just know how many th ways they can use to chump block all your hits. Gizmek is one of the easiest ones to predict for. So all you got to do is prepare for a monster negation or some sort of quick play removal 
and you're good. You can push right through. In terms of how to survive, you're going to need cards like Imperm, negating the effect of, say, the Numeron Dragon with the Grand Maju, pushing them back to down to zero. Forbidden Chalice is another really good one. If you're going to use cards like Forbidden Droplet, use it as a way to remove your weaknesses on the field so that they can't punch you really heavily. Because if you have a 8k Grand Maju, it still keeps the 4k, so that's what you have to plan for. And if you're going to stop them, well, you can throw an Ash on the Pot of Desires to minimize resources that they can put out like minimize the odds of getting kaijus against you but ultimately your survival rate it really depends on how much you put on board and how much monster negation you have left on the field deck number five rongo bongo phantom knights to be honest i don't like this deck and i see it so many times yeah. this deck's the most annoying deck ever because you know why rongo says you can't play Yu-Gi-Oh. i think it's one of the most unfair cards that konami has ever created and the card needs to get instant ban now it's worse than vfd I'm gonna be honest. If you guys read the card, it literally says you cannot summon. I I, I can't summon? Isn't that part of Yu-Gi-Oh? You know what I'm saying? How to prevent them from setting up their board? 100% gotta have Max E. You gotta main deck Max E, guys, to prevent them from going into Rongo. Next, Nibiru. You need to Nibiru them before Gossip Shadow comes out. The PK deck summons like a million, bazillion, gazillion bunch of times. So Nibiru is really great to counter against this deck before Ghost of Shadow comes out. And most importantly, it is really key to save your Ash and Impermanence for that Rusty. All right, guys, focus on the Rusty. Focus on Rusty, okay? And if you have no card to out the Rongo, just uh, set your back rows and hope for the best. That's pretty much it. But yeah, that's how you beat PK, you guys. Save the Ash Imperm for the Rusty Nibiru Maxi. Let's go, baby. Deck number six. Pendulum FDK. This is the most disgusting deck here because it is an FDK. It's consistent and it can even set up a little bit of monster negation before it even gets into full motion. So what do you have to know about this particular deck? All you need to know is they're trying to summon out a Predator Plant for a Tanaconda, go into Instant Fusion, summon the Independent Nightingale. That's going to be the key source of the effect that they're going to copy with two Starving Venom. With the two Starving Venom copying that, they're going to burn for 4k each and that's going to be game. So there's nothing for you to break. They do come in a bit of their extract into this. So if you don't stop this, there is nothing for you to break. In terms of board prevention, number one, Maxi. You need Maxi in this matchup. You need to throw Maxi on them. And then maybe you can even throw a draw and lockbird against your opponent. But uh, another way to stop them is to pair Nibiru with another hand trap, preferably an infinite impermanence because the imperm could be crucial when it comes to negating the effect of the Predator Plan for the Anaconda or even one of the Starving Venom if you happen to draw into it through the Maxi. Just don't let them copy the effect so you can't get the maximum burn. Nibiru likely would get negated by the Jackal King. So if you want to stop the Jackal King first, then throw the Nibiru and prevent the entire scenario from happening. That is also one way to keep yourself alive. And after that, you're going to need to break the rest of the board that you left behind. So if your deck is fully capable of comboing, this is where you would combo and do your thing. They don't really have too much of anything in the back row for instance because it's an ftk they want to load their hand with as much combo piece as possible which is why i wouldn't worry about the board breaking aspect of this deck now let's go on to deck number seven bird up let's go bird up aka lyrilis tri brigade how do you guys beat this deck this deck is very very annoying i do agree makes unbreakable boards it's really annoying to deal against well i got you covered what the deck has is layer disruption it has a summoning lock with the wind barrier statue a couple of bounces with ensemble robin utopic draco future it can have some more the deck has everything but how do you beat it let me tell you really important guys maxi warbler's activation you gotta maxi it maxi on warbler very important once they use their tri brigade monsters to banish three or banish four use infinite impermanence or effect wheeler on the tri brigade monster effect so that way that they don't get out true rag or some more very key very key keep that in your mind next to actually break their board you need cards like droplet or dark ruler no more those two cards are the best board breaker cards that you guys might want to consider maining when it comes to facing these combo decks so those are some of the key ways for you guys to actually beat bird up deck number eight virtual world their most signature play has to got to be throw a vfd at you and then sit on it skip your turn go back to them they're gonna otk you the turn after but from point a to point z right there there's got to be something that you can do about it and there is so how do we beat virtual world so from their setup they have shen shen as one of the most annoying monsters that acts as like an on-field macro cosmos and that monster is also recurring so if you're going to be breaking the vfd you also need to handle the shen shen so breaking vfd gamma is one of the 
best ways of doing it if you don't have gamma even if you have to use an imperm i know your turn is still likely going to get skipped because the chute is going to pop its own monster the vfd is going to go through but luckily there's only one vfd so you have to follow up with spells and traps call by the grave is pretty good and for them to actually set up their whole board throwing a maxi on them is going to give you the best chance because it is a combo deck they need to build up a ton of monsters to get there so drawing a ton of cards it will up your chances of survival if you're gonna have to use an ash blossom joy spring use it on the lulu or the Chenglong. everything else doesn't really matter and then call by the grave get rid of the shen shen and hopefully you have some sort of spell trap removal that's a little bit of a quick play or maybe you can just bait out the chuche so that you don't have to eat a face up monster destruction or face up card destruction that's really it and then the rest of it just play right through it all right guys deck number nine the second best deck in the entire master duel format eldritch i hate this deck i despise this deck do you know what the deck does set five pass that's it and it's beatable but just pray that they don't have imperial order if they have order you just got to surrender humbly surrender there's nothing wrong with that how to break their board evenly match red reboot twin twister lightning storm harpy's feather duster cosmic cyclone there are a bunch of cards to beat this deck all right guys a bunch make sure if you have ash blossom in your main deck make sure to save it for the sanguine okay Always keep the Ash for the Sanguine. Remember that. Guys, Eldritch is very annoying, but it's not unbeatable, guys. The deck can be easily beaten. You just got to be very confident and have the heart of the cards. All right, Tom, what's deck number 10? Finally, deck number 10. And Drytrons, their signature is Herald of Ultimateness. Once that baby lands on the field, you are going to have the worst time of your life. Everything's getting negated. Nothing ever comes up your way. They probably set up about seven negations, about maybe nine disruptions if they have a perfect loaded hand. It's a really rough ride, and to stop them, you can't give them any chances whatsoever. How do you beat Drytrons? Well, coming from the Drytron bully himself, uh, I will tell you guys, first of all, if you're going to break the board, you're going to need a lot of stuff that cannot be responded to, such as Dark Breather No More and Forbidden Droplets. Droplets is going to be costly. Try to minimize the resources by activating a card first, baiting a negation, and then chaining Droplet, getting rid of the card and a monster so that there's no response. That's one of the best ways. And then you have to answer the hand. And to answer the hand, call by the grave, get rid of the Herald of Orange Light, and the rest of it is free. Just... Control the board, don't let them play. If you're going to use Dark Brood no more, make sure you oppress it to the point where the stuff in the graveyard do not matter anymore. So those are the key points on breaking the board. What about using Hand Trap for prevention? If you need to prevent, drop the Maxi as early as possible before they get their Herald of Orange Light. Because if they get the Herald of Orange, your Maxi is already useless. And they already have, like, Call by the Grave, their own Ashes. If you're going to Ash and Imperm something, it's got to be Imperm on the Mu Beta because that prevents all the materials from being used as additional ritual summons. And then if you're going to be ashing them, just prevent them from using the diviner so that it doesn't change its level to six. Sometimes you might want to ash on the Ben 10. Uh, just check whether or not the first move that they did was to search a Ben 10. And then if they drop a Ben 10 as a second thing, then you can definitely use the ash on the Ben 10 that they just sent to the graver for the tribute. And that will maybe just stop everything. They won't be able to go into their diviner because they don't have diviner. And that's what we're looking for. So Sam, how would you like to wrap this up? All right, guys. So as you guys saw, we just talked about the top 10 best decks and how to beat every single one of them. But you guys may be wondering, Sam, Tom, what's the conclusion? You know what I'm saying? Like, what cards should I main the most? All right, guys, to conclude, we usually have 9 to 12 main deck spots for any flex hand traps or board breaking cards. I think one of the most important aspects when it comes to deck building is main decking board breaking cards, especially while going second. Cards like Droplet is very important. Cards like Dark Rural More is really important to break those Drytron boards and a bunch of negates. Also, at the same time, to deal with the Eldritch matchup. Cards like Lightning Storm and also Harpies, Feather Duster are very, very important to main. And these are just some of the board breaker cards you can consider when it comes to main decking. And when it comes to like board prevention, a well-timed max C can just deter your opponent from even playing the game. Ash Blossom, Joy Spring, also just stop them in their tracks. And if you're going first, a Call by the Grave will stop them in their tracks because it's just the well-covered counter all for anything that gets stuck in the graveyard. So Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Tom, thank you so much for coming on here, the Team Samurai X1 channel. I really appreciate you for breaking down all these decks. Guys, if you want in-depth analysis and top meta deck breakdowns and how to beat every single deck and high quality Yu-Gi-Oh content, make sure you check out my boy right here, mst.tv channel. The link will be in the description box below. Tom, any last words? 
Well, that's all I got. You know, thank you for having me, Sam. It's been a great time here. Hopefully, all of you guys can climb to Plat 1 or even further. I don't know. There's probably going to be more ranks coming out in the future. But yeah, good luck on your Plat climb. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ding that notification bell. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. Later, guys. Peace.